Well, I first got into music when uh, I was at school, and um, we uh, there were a couple of guys there with electric guitars and stuff, and of course the Beatles and Stones and Bob Dylan were all inspiring us to grow our hair long and wear pointy toed shoes and break the rules of the um, social constraints that were, existed up until about 1965. And um, so we put a little school band together, it was called Tattered Soul, and we used to play school dances and stuff. And then uh, after that we kind of all ended up the same guys at university, and um, by which time of course the Vietnam War was in full swing. And we all felt that the Vietnam War wasn't a good thing, and um, put a band together to basically play protest songs and motivate people to stop the war. That band was called Red Angel Panic. Um, they existed in Adelaide for a couple of years, and we were successful enough to be arrested. But it was all good. Um, following our lead singer's seventh motorbike accident, seventh and final, I thought, um, bugger this, you know, I'm, I've ended up a musician, I've dropped out of university, been asked to leave basically. And uh, so I put my first sort of professional band together, which was called Headband. And um, I was the by default lead singer and bass player in Headband. We made one album, the most expensive album ever made in Australia at the time, sold Diddly Squat, but the, the artwork was beautiful. Um, from that point on, um, I, I think what happened was that we weren't getting a lot of gigs and not making enough money, the album wasn't selling, I figured it was the band's fault so I'd go solo. So I quit and went solo, I got two gigs in three years, one of which I got paid for, the other one I didn't get paid for. And um, ended up back in Adelaide basically as landscape gardening and schlepping around looking for all sorts of, I don't know, washing pots and pans, whatever, to survive. Um, it was about that time that I met Buzz, and he and I were uh, both aficionados of the Little Feet, the Delta Fields, and thought we'd put a band together playing that kind of material. So um, we got together with a bunch of guys and uh, started to work on that, and then Buzz announced that he had a call from the Angels and would be leaving forthwith to go and play with them in Sydney. So that band fell over and I was fairly miffed about all that until six months later Buzz called and said, um, we need a bass player, come on over. So, okay, so I went to Sydney, joined up with the Angels. From that point spent six years with the Angels, um, made about seven albums I think and, um, and uh, someone's rattling with the champagne. Stop that! Yeah, okay. And, um, so we, yeah, Buzz and I were in the Angels together for about six years and then uh, left the Angels to go into Neverland again for about two years. Um, except for one band that came up at that time called the Invisible Men, aka the famous Nobodies, where I hooked up with Jeff Stapleton, the, subsequently the keyboard player for Gang of Jack. And um, in about 1984 I got a call from Buzz saying, we're going to put Ganga Jam together, come on over, we're riding with Mark Callahan. come on over and play on some stuff and play a bit of duck tennis, on another story, it's tennis in the wet basically, it's a lot of fun. Um, and we worked on the first album and then we had almost the first album complete, we needed a band to go out and play it, so we called Jeff Stapleton, played some gigs. I think we've stayed together for so long because um, we've got um, we're just fairly easygoing people. I mean, we're, uh, <clears throat> obviously we've got our foibles and our, our personalities are different and there's, you know, there's the odd difference of opinion, but ultimately I think we respect each other as, as people and, um, and we just have a lot of fun and we like what we do, so plus we didn't have a lot of other options. <laughs> <laughs>